I create a huge amount of content here on YouTube, over on Instagram, on Twitter, on threads, and sometimes even on TikTok. And staying on top of it all sometimes is a lot of work, but I use three main devices to do that, which is my iPhone, my iPad, and my Mac. And today I wanted to show you how I use all of those and why I think the Apple ecosystem is so heavily tailored for creators. So let's get right into it. Let's start with what I do and what I use to make it first. I'm a YouTuber first and foremost, and I use a bunch of Apple based products to kind of produce stuff there. First off, that starts with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I've got it here in the natural titanium. And I must admit, I upgrade every year because I'm in this kind of content game, but I think most of you probably shouldn't. Upgrading every year is kind of like not a great trait to have, but for me, someone that has to stay within that sphere, I kind of need to. Secondly, and you probably know from watching this channel, I use the iPad. I've got a huge variation of iPads, which I'm not overly proud about owning, and I generally jump around these a lot, but I'm using the 12.9 inch M2 Pro at the moment, which has been fantastic for all of my workflows. And that's backed up with my powerhouse of a Mac Studio, which is just the M1 Max variant, which got 32 gigabytes of RAM, 32 GPU cores, and a terabyte of memory which is fantastic. And then I also have a base model M1 Pro MacBook Pro, which honestly keeps up way more than I would expect it to, but that's great for when I need to do really kind of complex stuff on the move. And the last piece of hardware, which I use pretty much on a daily basis is this little Kingston drive. This is a two terabyte SSD and it lets me move around really large video projects and files when I need to, or when the cloud just isn't quite enough, or if I need to hand off lots of clips to someone else, it's fantastic for that. That rounds off all the hardware and they all kind of feed into the three distinct ways I make my kind of content. First up is planning, second is creating, and third is releasing. So let's dive into those now. When it comes to planning everything I do, my kind of iPad and iPhone take center stage here. And generally speaking, I always plan the day before. And I actually picked this up from a book reference called Deep Work, which just kind of really encourages you to make a plan the day before. So I always do that on Microsoft To Do. When it comes to actually picking the video idea, I use Notion. And I use Notion to keep track of basically absolutely everything that's in my head. I'll put into Notion and then I'll pull video ideas from that. Notion is a really great app. I've talked about it before, so I'll link the video up here if you'd like to see it, but it just helps me keep on track of absolutely everything. One of the last cloud-based apps I use as well is Google Docs, and this is kind of where I type up everything that I thought about on Notion or on GoodNotes or in Microsoft To Do or anything like that. I put it all onto a bullet pointed script in Google Docs. And I used to use a complete script for these videos, but I really didn't like the way I sounded on camera. And it also kind of locks off your vision. So you're just looking directly into the camera, which isn't really that natural. I wanted it to feel like you're here with me, not kind of listening to a robot script. All three of those apps are cloud-based, which means I can jump between my iPhone and my iPad or my Mac or pretty much any other device if I need to and carry on where I left off, which for planning is probably one of the most important things for me. This is also where the Apple ecosystem kicks in quite nicely. So if I'm browsing on a website on my phone and I need to check that on my Mac or my iPad, Handoff will just let me click it and it will bring me straight back to where I was. I can also use the copy and paste within Handoff as well. So I can take something from my iPad and put it directly on my phone or vice versa, which is really, really useful. Basically when it comes to planning, it means it doesn't really matter which device I'm on. I can always do what I need to regardless of what I'm using. Whether that's using my Mac to pick up the phone or using my iPad to send a message, or using my iPhone to finish off some emails. It doesn't matter where I am, I can do it from whatever device I'm on and I find that really useful. Before we move on, I wanted to take a moment to talk about today's paid partnership. <clears throat> For me, one of the constant pressures as a creator is performance in terms of high views, positive comments, and honestly, just hard factual numbers which tell me if I'm doing well or not, despite how I feel about it. Most creators work alone, and this can be pretty damaging to deal with. And I feel very lucky to have close friends and family to discuss this with, but I know not everybody does or feels comfortable doing so. Or sometimes those friends and family don't know how to advise us or give us bad advice because they're so close to us, which is where today's pay partnership with BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp makes therapy more accessible and affordable. It's 100% online and you get to decide how you interact with it, whether it's a phone call, video call, or just messaging. And if you're someone trying to get your first step in participating with therapy, BetterHelp offers a more comfortable and tailored way of sharing your emotions with a specialist. You can schedule these calls in whenever it suits you best too. Starting therapy can be tricky and finding the right therapist, especially in your area, can be even harder. So if you're assigned a therapist that isn't working for you, 
BetterHelp allows you to switch to someone new at no additional cost. Joining up is as simple as filling out a short survey to find the right style of therapy for you. And then usually within 48 hours, you'll be ready to start your sessions. So if you think you might benefit from therapy, then use the link in the description below or visit betterhelp.com slash bite review for 10% off your first month. The second part of my workflow is creating all the content. And this is where my iPhone would take a little bit of a backseat and the iPad and the Mac Studio will take center stage. The iPad comes in the most useful here when I'm filming this, which is the A-roll. I actually have my iPad off to the side with all the bullet points and I'll just check this while I'm talking. I'll also use it when I'm filming all of the B-roll. So when I shoot all the B-roll for this video, I'll have a list on GoodNotes, something which I would have drawn up earlier. And then I'll go through the entire list on GoodNotes while I'm filming all the B-roll. After getting all the content, whether that's video or photos or short form stuff, I then move to the Mac Studio. And I'm quite a big believer in using the right tool for the job. So for all of my video editing, I use the Mac Studio. You can do things on an iPad and you can edit some things on an iPhone. But for me, there's just no point. It just takes longer. So I'd much rather do it on a much more comfortable situation. And the Mac Studio is the ultimate way to do that for me. I'll mainly use Final Cut on the Mac Studio to bring everything together. And while I am editing, Editing, I usually have my iPad set up next to it. I'm still trying to find the best position for this at the moment since moving into the new studio, but I'll have my iPad set up next to my Mac screen and I'll use universal control to completely control the iPad from my Mac keyboard and mouse. This is really, really useful because it lets me check all of my notes that I've got before or the bullet points or check my script against the B-roll while I'm editing, which is just a really nice, useful feature. While I'm busy working on the Mac Studio and the iPad, I'll actually just put my phone on standby mode and this will just let me charge it up and it will give me some notifications when I need it. Not to mention, it just kind of looks cool as well. Also, I use Photoshop on the Mac Studio for all of my thumbnail work as well, because honestly, it's just the easiest place to do it. When I'm done editing a YouTube video, I'll upload it through the desktop as well because the mobile experience for uploading videos on YouTube, I just don't like, so I always prefer to do that on desktop too. If there are times as well when I have to take work home with me, which is something which I don't like to do, but it does often happen, then I'll use my M1 Pro MacBook Pro, which pretty much handles everything I need it to at home, no problem at all. The final part of my workflow is the promotion and release of everything that you see. And for this, I mainly jump back to my iPhone, but there's a little bit of iPad use in there as well. One of the huge benefits here for me is AirDrop. So for pretty much all of my Instagram content, whether that's photos or videos for reels or TikToks or anything like that, I use AirDrop on the Mac to bring all of that to my phone. For all of my releases, I'll do all of it through the individual apps because I tend to find that the app experience of promoting something or putting in a link just works way better than using anything on a computer. I've tried using things like Hootsuite before and other apps to kind of bring all of my social media into one place but honestly for me it just doesn't work out and I tend to find if you post on something through those apps that the algorithm seems to push it down or you know Instagram doesn't like it when you're using something else to post so I will always promote all of them through their individual apps. When it comes to posting short form, I actually edit all of those within the apps too. So if it's an Instagram reel, I'll edit it with the music that Instagram provides as well to just increase search results. Occasionally I'll use universal control to transfer some pictures directly from my Mac to my iPad and then open up something like Instagram and my iPad and post those photos immediately. I'll also go back to using copy and paste through handoff again. So when I upload a YouTube video, it will give me that link. As long as I hit copy on my Mac, that means that will be pasteable on my iPad or iPhone. So if I need to update my link tree or my link in bio or anything like that, I can do it immediately just from copying that link. So that's a brief overview of how I kind of create content here and how I promote it so you can all see it. And I think the kind of thread that runs through all of that is pretty much the Apple ecosystem. And I really do think it's finely tuned to all of us creators, especially if we're working in video or photo, having everything work in sync that easily just makes us more productive and it just makes the whole thing much nicer to be in. And it's also worth being careful about because if you don't make content, it's really easy to want to fall into that kind of section where everything works best together. But really you should get the product which works the best for you, whether that's Apple or not. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're using the Apple ecosystem in any way which I haven't mentioned, which is really interesting, then do leave a comment below because I'd love to read about that. And as ever, I will see you all in the next one.